In February, the Rockets went all in on small ball, trading away Clint Capella and essentially playing with no center. And ever since then, one of the most interesting questions was, how would this Rockets team fare on defense? With Harden, Westbrook, and shooting, we knew they'd be dynamic on offense, and they have been, but how would their undersized lineup fare on the defensive end? Well, six months later, we have a much greater idea of what their defense looks like. So let's get to it. Let's start with the numbers. In the regular season over 63 games before the season was suspended, the Rockets had an average defense, ranking 15th in the NBA. And since then, according to the numbers, they've gotten progressively better. In the eight seeding games, their defense was ranked 8th, and so far in the playoffs, their defense has been ranked 6th. It all starts with their switching and how that disrupts offenses. Here for instance, they'll switch a 1-5 pick and roll between Paul and Noel, and they can do this because here their center is Jeff Green who can switch on to guards, and while Harden is undersized down low, he can switch because of his strength. And their perimeter defense on the switches has been fantastic. Even Harden, who's been picked on in the past, has been really solid, and here he keeps Shea Gilgis Alexander in front, and then on the post up, Jeff Green holds his own inside. A lot of people thought Dennis Schroeder would be the one guy who could break down their defense and get to the rim, but he's largely been kept in check. Sure, he's had some plays where he's gotten to the rim, but over two games he scored 19 points and Houston has been able to keep him out of the paint. And here that's your center, PJ Tucker, baiting a three. On this play, first, Gordon does a nice job of staying in front of CP3, and then as the ball comes to Schroeder, House plays incredible on-ball defense, just stifling Schroeder, and their intensity in these two games have been off the charts. They're committed to defense and committed to keeping the ball in front. OKC has also helped them out. Their offense has been pretty stagnant with very little off-ball movement, but that's what Houston does to teams. Their 1-5 through five switching takes teams out of what they normally do, and they make teams adjust to them, not the other way around. They've also been good with the details of switching itself. Here for instance, look how Green is physical with Adams as he sets that screen, so there's no chance for Adams to slip and roll to the rim. And then when they do switch, look how crisp it is, Harden keeps his touch with Adams. And then later, nice job by House to not foul. They've also been good at the scram switch when they have a smaller player switched on to a bigger player. So here for instance, Austin Rivers is switched on to Gallinari, and to take away this mismatch, Rivers and the bigger Covington will switch off ball. Look how quickly it's done as Covington takes Gallinari and Rivers takes Covington's man, and now there's no mismatch. And their off ball switching has also been good. Here, Schroeder comes off of a screen, but Green's switch not only takes that action away, but his pressure forces Schroeder to catch it near half court. And again, Green is playing center, and Schroeder is unable to exploit that switch. Their denials in general have been good, and a good example is by looking at this set play from OKC. The set starts with two handoffs, and then OKC wants to reverse the ball. But Houston has scouted this play and said, we want to deny that pass, and here they do. This takes the rhythm out of the offense, and then later on the play, House does a nice job of switching off ball and then denying CP3, and this is a really good defensive possession, and the most telling part is by looking at the time on the clock. This was the first play of game 2, and that is how you set the tone defensively for the rest of the game. And then later in game 2, OKC runs this same play, and again we see that denial taking away that pass on top, forcing Adams to catch it and make a play. OKC ran this set versus Houston in the regular season, and the difference is night and day. Notice how there's no denial on that reversal, and this lets OKC get into their set, and they eventually work a slip. Houston is also impressed with their help defense. They haven't been beat off the dribble very often, but when they have, their help has been very quick to react. Here for instance, Tucker is quick on his help and when you're undersized you have to be early, 
Then Harden does a nice job on the sink, covering for Tucker down low, and then the rest of the team rotates very well on the perimeter, putting out the fire, and in general just looking like the Raptors. This is a really good sequence from Eric Gordon. On the first drive, he steps in as the low man to force the pass out, and then on the next drive, he steps in to take a charge which is significant for Gordon because this was the first charge he's taken all season. Their help was also really good and aggressive in the gaps. They did a good job of shrinking the floor. Here for instance, as the ball is on the wing, Rivers comes over to the nail to get in the vision of Schroeder and he gets the steal. This was clearly a point of emphasis for them and it helps their perimeter defense. Here, Schroeder could turn the corner, but House is right there in the gap even off of a quality shooter in Paul, and while this could give up a 3, Houston did a good job of helping and recovering these past two games. And then House finishes the possession by stopping Paul, and House has been great. This is a good example of how they're not afraid to really load up on the ball. House is helping off of shooter here, and it almost looks like a zone defense, but it's not, and House still recovers on the pass. They've also done a nice job of helping extra aggressive off of poor shooters. Here, Tucker helps extra in the gap because he's guarding Lou Dort, a 30% three-point shooter, and then this is just a great play by Tucker to still close out and then contain the drive. Great box out. Speaking of boxing out, let's talk about their rebounding, which is understandably one of the main questions people have about their defense. But so far in this series, they've held up pretty well in the glass, and here we see they give great effort with four guys coming in to gang rebound. Adams has given them a bit of trouble. In two games, he has seven offensive rebounds, but they're doing their best to double team him whenever they can. And this is terrific. Macklemore, who's playing the best basketball of his life, fronts Adams in the post, but then on the shot, of course Adams has inside position. But then look how Green helps out Macklemore by boxing out Adams himself. But with rebounding, we definitely want to lean on the numbers, and here's some stats. So in the eight seeding games, their opposing offensive rebound rate was quite high, and Houston ranked 22nd in terms of defensive rebounding. So even as they played good defense in those eight games, they were not rebounding the ball. In the two playoff games, they're 8th out of 16 teams, so about average, so the rebounding has held up against OKC. But the reason why the rebounding is still a major issue besides their obvious size disadvantage is because OKC doesn't offensive rebound. In the regular season, they were 28th in terms of grabbing offensive rebounds, so in this area, they're not much of a test for Houston. And you can see OKC's philosophy here. On the three-point shot, Adams will look to crash, but everyone else heads back on defense. If the Rockets make the next round, they'll face either the Lakers or the Blazers, who both crash the glass more, so that'll be a greater test. And let's finish by talking about post-ups. So this is the one area where Houston has had a bit of trouble. On 19 post-up plays, OKC has scored 24 points, which is a strong 1.26 points per play. And this is the work of Adams and Gallinari. Adams has had some success overpowering Houston's smaller defenders in the post, and Gallinari is a very skilled player who's ran hot on his mid-range jumpers. But watching the games live, it hasn't felt like OKC post-ups have done too much damage for Houston, because those numbers don't take into account plays like this, where Harden fronts Gallinari, OKC can't get it inside, and because of that front, the rest of OKC's possession is pretty stagnant. and the Rockets have done a nice job of being physical on those fronts, and two times, post entries for OKC has resulted in turnovers, and those turnovers are also not in the Synergy post-up numbers. So this will be interesting to monitor. OKC does have guys who can score in the post, but Houston also does have switchable guys who are extremely strong. Well, there you have it guys. Based on their recent defensive performance, Houston Rockets fans have lots to be optimistic about. And Westbrook will come back soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.